Hey everyone and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down the tropical mayhem that's occurring across the Atlantic Ocean right now with five different tropical disturbances and a few of which could pose threats to land. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today and how these tropical systems will steer towards areas like the United States. And we're first going to begin with this massive ring of fire. We have a high pressure system that is centered in the central United States. This is our heat dome that's been bringing the relentless heat across a very large chunk of the United States. And with any high pressure system, we're going to have a clockwise spin. And this is in the upper levels. Notice where all the clouds are in the infrared imagery right now. They're all in the outskirts of this ridge. And that is because this ridge is just so intense. We have no cloud cover at all in the central plains or even in the southern plains right now. And that's all due to this very strong ridge that is not really moved at all over the weekend now notice back over on the west coast we still have the remnants of emily with all the rainfall that occurred back over in california and this is all moving to the north because of this jet stream and as well as this high pressure system which is steering all this water vapor from south to north hence why we had that big flooding concern yesterday with catastrophic flooding in many areas that was because of this heat dome and this heat dome has been causing so many issues throughout the summer with relentless severe weather weather in some areas and as well as the heat wave that is never ending for even North Texas for example. Dallas Fort Worth has been over 100 degrees over 40 times this summer. Their average is 20 so it's been very hot there as well. And then back down the Gulf of Mexico we have some tropical activity that is moving toward Texas right now. There is a chance that we see a tropical storm by tomorrow morning for those in southern Texas. This will make landfall near Corpus Christi by the afternoon hours. Bring some rainfall and as well as maybe even some low end storm surge so there will be something to watch for there. And we'll talk about more on that later in this forecast. Now, this is what the jet stream looks like right now. The jet stream is lifted well back out to the north. It's a fairly strong jet stream right now. Our heat dome is sitting in the central United States, and that's what's bringing that relentless heat. Now, over the next several days, this heat dome is not going to move very much. So notice once we get closer to Tuesday into Wednesday, the heat dome is just sitting here in parts of the central plains and back through the Mississippi Valley, which will continue to bring that heat wave that's not going to be moving anytime soon. And then our jet stream will be well lifted up to the north, so severe weather should be prevented here over the next five to seven days in terms of a significant threat like a enhanced risk for example and i'm not really seeing anything like that in our foreseeable future across the united states by thursday and a friday notice there's going to be that heat dome moving to the south and west so this will start to move and basically migrate down to parts of the southern plains and as well as the central plains jet stream starts to dip a bit more maybe a small trough back up in canada that could perhaps bring the threat for some severe weather but as of right now it's kind of uncertain we're a little bit far out once we get into the weekend and into next week we'll be watching that heat dome really start to push down to the south we'll have multiple different areas of high pressure and this will obviously be something to watch for in terms of any tropical systems that will try to develop we'll have to watch all those areas very closely as of right now though it is currently looking to be a very hot next seven to ten days here across the united states the Atlantic tropics are exploding right now. We have five different areas that we're watching for across the Atlantic Ocean with two tropical storms. We have one post-tropical cyclone, an area of development back over in the eastern Atlantic Ocean, and as well as a potential tropical cyclone in the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to break down all these systems for you to give you an idea of where they're heading and if they'll be making impacts to the United States, the lesser or greater Antilles, etc. We'll be going over everything. So as of right now, we're going to start east to west. As of right now, we do have an area back over in parts of the eastern Atlantic Ocean. This is an area of development. As of right now, this is projected to stay out to sea. Also, we have post-tropical cyclone Emily. This is getting ripped apart in terms of wind shear. I'll show you more on that in just a moment. This is also not expected to impact the United States. We have tropical storm Gert and as well as tropical storm Franklin. And then we have potential tropical cyclone 9 in the Gulf of Mexico, which is expected, by the way, to become a tropical storm over the next 24 hours, and it will be impacting the Gulf Coast. Again, we'll break down all these systems for you right now, coming up here's the satellite imagery here across the entire atlantic ocean again notice the most organized systems in terms of at least the uh, overall structure on the satellite imagery is primarily tropical storm franklin as well as the potential tropical cyclone 9 back over in the gulf of mexico the other three areas right now are not very organized but again we're going to kind of show you in depth what those look like here coming up but before we show you everything in depth we need to talk about the saharan dust in the wind shear these are two killers of tropical storms and hurricanes and as of right now we have a lot of saharan dust to talk about one of which is back over near post-tropical cyclone 
Emily. This is a system that was developing, but it wasn't expected to really last a whole lot. And the main reason why is because of look at all the Saharan dust right here. All that yellow and red that you see there. This is all Saharan dust. That is a lot of Saharan dust, which creates dry air, which can weaken out a system entirely. There's also a lot of wind shear there. So it's really unfavorable environment. Back over where Tropical Storm Franklin is, there really isn't a whole lot of shear right now in this area, nor is there really any Saharan dust. The only Saharan dust is off to the north and northwest. And that honestly is not that much Saharan dust. We really have to zoom out for this one, but back over in the Gulf of Mexico, there is no Saharan dust there. There's a lot of warm ocean waters there. So it's a pretty favorable environment from here for this system to develop. It did struggle a bit more though with shear initially and as well as interacting with land. And also Tropical Storm Gerd, I don't want to forget about this one. It's not really having issues with Saharan dust, but there is a lot of shear in this area. So that's going to cause some issues here down the road. In terms of what we're looking at across the board, in terms of wind shear, this is going to be a looking like a very confusing map at first, but a couple things I want to point out. This is Florida right here. This is the Lesser Antilles. We have a tropical system here right now. That is Tropical Storm Franklin. Not a whole lot of wind shear there, but look over here. 50 knots right now for wind shear. All this red is indicating unfavorable environment for the wind shear. We have a lot of wind shear right now just east of the Lesser Antilles where Tropical Storm Gertz is, so it's not a very variable environment, and as well as back over to the east where Emily is, another very unfavorable environment. And then back over in the Gulf of Mexico, there's some moderate shear overall but there is a little pocket of some very light shear so it's not gonna have too many issues but it will have enough of issues basically for it to not really rapidly strengthen over the next 24 hours so overall it should stay on the weaker side of things let's talk about all the tropical cyclones in depth across the Atlantic Ocean and we'll begin with post tropical cyclone Emily as of right now this has sustained winds around 35 miles per hour it is expected to weaken and go out to sea so you might be wondering why are we talking about this well I'm just mentioning it just in case you were curious it's going out to sea at this point and one one really cool thing about this system, what we're seeing on the uh, satellite imagery, is how this system has evolved with the rapid amount of shear. You'll notice that it's a very defined eye moving off to the west-northwest, but the problem with this is that all the shear is knocking off all the clouds aloft. So this is a system that is weakened out entirely because of wind shear. It's really incredible to see that. The convection with this is very minimal. So again, very interesting to see that. And the same thing goes for Tropical Storm Gert, which is currently expected to weaken down to a tropical depression over the next few hours as it moves toward the Lesser Antilles. It is going to weaken. It has no expectation at this point of intensifying or really bringing any major impacts to any land. This is what it looks like on infrared imagery as well. Again, notice the evolution of this wind shear knocking off all the convection. This is the convection right here on the eastern side. This is your low pressure system. Again, this is all being knocked off by wind shear, which is quite incredible to see. And that is why with El Nino, wind shear can be a kicker with tropical cyclones. It really can weaken them out very quickly. In terms of Tropical Storm Franklin, this is the most concerning one that we have across the entire Atlantic Ocean right now. It is expected to become a hurricane down the road. As of right now, it is a tropical storm. Sustained winds of 50 miles per hour, by the way. So it is a moderate tropical storm at this point. It is currently moving west, but it is expected to move to the north as we go into tomorrow. It's pretty much sitting in the Caribbean Sea. It'll be going towards areas like the Dominican Republic and Haiti. There are tropical storm warnings in effect there, as well as some tropical storm watches on the north northern side of those islands and back into parts of the Bahamas. And this will eventually by Thursday into Friday start to strengthen into a hurricane. This is likely to go toward Bermuda. So if you live in the Bermuda area or if you know anybody there, make sure they're monitoring this very closely because it is likely to go up that direction. Will it make a direct impact there? It's a little bit too early to tell, but we'll keep you posted. And the satellite imagery on Tropical Storm Franklin is pretty incredible as well. This doesn't tell the entire story though. There is a lot of convection with this. This is a very intense system. The satellite imagery obviously showing tons of cloud cover here, but look at the convection that we're seeing over in parts of the Eastern Caribbean Sea. This is all associated with that tropical system. There's an insane amount of convection with this. Same thing goes back up in the Gulf of Mexico. You can see that top left of your screen. There's a decent amount of convection, but this is a very organized area of convection with uh, sustained winds around 50 miles per hour, which again is a tropical storm. So pretty impressive to see that right now with this system. Now, where is this going over the next several days? Well, it's going to continue to move to the west as we go throughout the next 24 hours. There is still a very, very, very small chance it continues to go west. I don't expect that though. I think that there will be a high pressure system that'll transfer this going further to the north and then eventually impacting perhaps Bermuda down the road. And this will likely continue to move off to the north. Really past here, there's a lot more uncertainty. So where this goes is much more uncertain. There will at least be some impacts to Bermuda, it looks like. Maybe the east coast, but it's nothing too significant, at least as of right now. But again, stay tuned. We'll keep you posted with the latest on that. Here's the tropical uh, cyclone intensity guide for Franklin. Again, it is expected to become a stronger tropical storm. It very well could become a hurricane as we go closer to around five to seven days from now so really in the later half of this week it 
and into the weekend so definitely make sure you're monitoring it very closely last tropical cyclone we need to talk about is the one in the gulf of mexico as of right now this is currently located in the central gulf of mexico as of 10 a.m this morning it's a little bit further to the west now in terms of its center it is likely to become a low-end tropical storm before tomorrow morning and make landfall around eight to nine in the morning tomorrow and this will be making landfall near corpus christi houston is currently not in the track of this but there will maybe be a couple of passing showers that's about it though out of this system for those areas this is what it looks like on the satellite imagery again there is a ton of convection with this not very organized right now but it is expected to become a bit more organized over the next 12 to 24 hours will it become a tropical storm i would say about a 70 percent chance of that but it could very well at least become a tropical depression before landfall storm surge is possible out of this up to three feet from anywhere from sergeant back through corpus christi bay and as well as down to the mouth of rio grande that will be the areas that we have to watch for very closely out of this rainfall totals looking to be one anywhere between one to two inches a couple of spots could get upwards of four inches of rainfall in those yellow and orange shaded areas but overall that rainfall will stay in southern texas and unfortunately it's not getting any rainfall for those that desperately need it back up in central and north texas again we are getting close to the peak of hurricane season we are currently near august we're just past august 20th so right now this is where we're at we are starting to get to the peak of hurricane season so definitely make sure you're staying tuned if you're along the gulf coast or anywhere along the east coast and again another cool imagery here of the satellite back through parts of the gulf of mexico thank you so much for watching make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already